Hey guys, what's up? It's Steph D, and today we're going to be delving deep into the world of Greek mythology. The thing I love about mythology so much is that the stories, although somewhat cheesy, are great because you can learn a lot from them, and they're pretty cool, honestly. Uh, pretty magical, and yeah, without further ado, let's get into the story about Narcissus and a little bit about Echo because their stories tie in together. So, let's do it. So yeah, there's like eight or nine different stories about Narcissus, but all of them are pretty much the same. They all teach the same lesson and they all kind of go off of the same principle. And before you ask, yes, the word Narcissism does come from Narcissus. And there's also a flower called Narcissus. But people don't really know whether the flower or the myth came first. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg, but they're kind of tied together somehow, people think. At least that's how it's been passed down in history. So, yeah. So, our story starts with Narcissus, who was a hunter from Thespiae, which is an ancient city in Greece. And basically, lots of people would come up to him and confess their love to him. And the only problem with that is that he would just tell people to screw off, basically. They're like, yeah, you love me, but you're not good enough for me. The only person that is, is myself. So people would actually go and kill themselves to prove how loyal and devoted they were to him. And honestly, he loved it because he knew people loved him. And he was just so happy. Like, the more people he rejected, the happier he got. And that eventually it made him the happiest guy in, in, in his city. Nobody learned, nobody understood that's what he was trying to do. And everyone just always kept telling him and giving him attention. And that's basically where his story starts. Now, of course, in ancient Greek, Mythology, you always got to get involved with some gods or some nymphs or anything magical. So one day he was in the forest hunting and Echo, a nymph, saw him and he kind of, he felt like someone was following him. He's like, what's going on here? So he calls out, who's there? Eventually the nymph, Echo, Guess what she says? Yep. She echoed back, Who's there? And eventually she came out of her hiding spot and tried to hug Narcissus. But Narcissus being the way he is, telling her to screw off and all that. And that made Echo really sad. So the story of Echo, basically she runs away because she's super heartbroken that this douchebag rejected her and she would just walk around in forests and glens and she would be talking to herself and her voice would be like ringing back and forth in the trees that's why her name is echo of course but eventually she would decay into nothing and one of the gods nemesis the goddess of revenge found out and she wanted to punish Narcissus because she doesn't think people should be treated like that which I mean I guess if you want revenge who else better than to get it from the literal goddess of revenge herself so what Nemesis did was lure Narcissus to a pond a little stream with water and she made his reflection in the pool a very beautiful, more beautiful, younger version of himself. So when Narcissus looked into the pool, he saw himself, but a more beautiful version. He didn't think it was himself, and he was staring at it, and he pretty much instantly fell in love. So he kind of got what was coming to him, and he learned what other people were feeling towards him and eventually he realized he could not have the reflection because it wasn't a person he realized that there was no hope 
left and he killed himself and he turned into a flower he turned into a narcissist or a daffodil that they're called but they share the same name although it's a short story about narcissists i think it's good to learn a thing or two about not being so self-absorbed and loving yourself because you never know what it could lead to you never know what kind of people you're affecting you never know the implications that you're bringing on yourself when you just don't care about anyone else except yourself and like i was saying before this is what i like about greek stories tragedies mythology whatever is that it's not obvious and it's kind of crudely written like people killing themselves is a little extreme but it is pretty cool thing to read how people have been writing about this stuff for so long and sorry this is my first video back i don't know how i'm gonna do this format but i'm learning and it will get better i promise but thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one